I want to really start off by thanking uh, the governor's office, the governor himself, and his office, and all of his uh, people here as working on the, the issue around this virus, and thank our hospital partners. Uh, without their help and, and, and assistance and the information that they give us, we would be flying blind. And so I want to really, um, again, thank the governor uh, and his people and, and the hospitals. Um, we, will give, we will be giving this uh, regular updates. Uh, it could be in this fashion or form, or it could be through a press release. It could be through uh, various ways, but we'll be giving regular updates to keep you informed. Uh, as of now, there has been no confirmed cases of the virus in Cleveland. And uh, what we are seeking to do is to minimize the impact, severity, uh, or duration of the virus if, in fact, it does come to the city of Cleveland. Uh, these are precautionary uh, measures that we're taking. But as you know, there is no boundaries to how the virus will spread. And because uh, there is no boundary, we are making some decisions today. The first decision uh, that we, we've made is that we are issuing a proclamation of civil emergency. Now, uh, we are under that, we are forming a civil emergency executive policy group, which folds into our emergency operations center and emergency operation plan. Uh, that group oversees the conditions during the civil emergency and makes recommendations on additional actions necessary to minimize uh, the adverse impact of the civil emergency, in this case would be the virus, including the amendment of city rules and procedures. It will also, uh, it will allow us to maintain a day-to-day -day handle on what is going on and adjust our policy as necessary, either uh, one way or another, whatever it may be, as it comes up, and it will be based on um, the advice we get from our external partners and our internal people in regards to the scientific and, and health approach to this. In addition, we have been working, we are working with the St. Patrick's Day Parade Committee to cancel this year's uh, parade. We're also working with the Cleveland International Film Festival to cancel uh, their event. Uh, now, the second thing that we're doing is we're recommending that sponsors of events consider whether or not they want to cancel their events and that the attendees uh, of these events consider whether or not they would like to attend. Uh, wherever there is a gathering of people, no matter what the size is, it, this would probably be a problem. Uh, wherever there's a gathering of people, there is an opportunity for the spread of the virus. And people are, are, who are responsible for those gatherings, along with the people attending them, should take uh, that into consideration. Again, this would be something that uh, we would probably take into consideration and probably not have if, in fact, there was uh, uh, something really going on. We would just give you information. Um, now, here in the city, city government, we are looking at uh, the gatherings that we are responsible for, the meetings that we're responsible for, and, 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 and considering what we will do in regards to that. Again, we are, uh, we are canceling uh, these two events and advising sponsors of events to consider whether or not they want to con continue their events or uh, and the attendees whether or not they would like to attend or not. Now, third, uh, we are also advising all organizations, whether public or private, to look at their operations and how they sanitize their space and how they function, operate, and disseminate information to employees going forward. In addition, our Emergency Operations Center, along with our uh, Joint Information Center, will be activated, uh, I believe it's tomorrow. Someone told me tomorrow. Uh, uh, coordinating emergency operations, and they will be uh, open on uh, doing regular uh, 
workday hours unless um, the situation warrants differently. And we will disseminate information to the media from that, from the, the joint information uh, uh, with G, right? Right. Uh, so um, uh, I want to thank you for attending. And if you have any questions, I'm available or anyone up here who is, uh, can answer the questions available. Questions? What's the economic toll to the city of Cleveland so far? Well, we have no, have no idea. And that's not our consideration right now. Is there a concern even over some of the events that are still going on that they're looking spectators? Is that enough for right now? Or should, should events like basketball games and that tournament be considering potentially canceling those? Well, we, again, that's why we've, we declared this, um, have this proclamation of civil emergency and form the, the, uh, the committee that will analyze this and review it on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and, and as information comes to us that would warrant the relaxing of things or the acceleration of things, we'll, we'll take their advice. Who are some of the folks who are on that committee? Well, it, it's internal. Uh, the proclamation is internal. Uh, raise your hand so I can name you. Um, we have, uh, what's your title? Chief Public who who else ah. and then we have where's Sharon go ahead <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was on the city's finance director and the interim chief of staff director of public safety right which is our first responders <clears throat> And of course, in that they will be operating at the uh, Emergency Operations Center, and that is run by, where are you? Fred Zabel, and where's the director? Oh. Laura Palenkis. Laura Palenkis. In the health department. Oh, in the health department, mm -hmm. right. Can someone speak to you? I'll, I'll, you next, okay. But go ahead, go ahead, ma'am. Can anyone speak to what the economic impact could be? I know you don't have numbers yet, but you have canceled the parade as well as the spectators of the match. We, we, we have, I have no idea of what the economic impact is. And, and again, to be honest with you, I'm not considering that right now. Uh, what I'm considering is whether or not we are prepared as a city to, uh, as I say, minimize the impact the severity or the duration of what potentially will happen. And to me, that is the most important thing right now. Uh, I imagine after everything is over with, uh, somebody can would, have, will report what, they, what it could have been if in fact we did that. But right now, we don't know. And I'm not looking at it right now. Yeah, a lot of businesses are concerned. I, I understand that there mm -hmm. is a concern for you guys to, to keep this under control. but. What would you say to a business person that's upset that all of these things are canceled? Well, uh, I imagine they'd be more upset if they got sick. Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned a film festival and some topics because they could cancel it if they could. Uh, how about movie theater? Uh, Again, the, where, that's why I said in, in my statement, any uh, sponsor or, or organization that uh, has gathering of people, they have to consider that. They have to consider that. And, and people have to consider whether or not they would attend those venues or events. They will have to consider. You know, we're, we're not at a point where we're saying to uh, everyone in Cleveland is a complete lockdown and, and no one goes anywhere and stay at home. We're not there. We're not saying that. We're telling people who are responsible for gatherings, consider it. And those who attend those gatherings consider it. And we in the city, in government, and we're looking at it as to what things do we do that uh, facilitates uh, the gathering of people and whether we should cancel those things or limit it or find a different way of communicating. We're looking at that ourselves internally. Yes, ma'am. Does the St. Patrick's Day Parade, to your knowledge, ever been canceled before? Ma'am. No, not to last 175 years. Right. So it wasn't an easy decision on their part or ours. Whose call was that ultimately? 
Or was it something you did? Well, we, 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 we talked. We talked, but um, 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 I asked, and, and, and they uh, agreed. But, uh, but we talked, and ultimately um, it becomes the, our decision as to whether or not we would allow it to continue. But we, didn't, we, we talked to them about it. This is in part a result of conversations this morning with the government. I understand you've to several large cities. Well, um, that was, well, we were, we had been talking about this for a little bit, right? We've been talking yeah. for quite some time. Yes. Right. Can a patient yeah. who displays symptoms, symptoms produce treatment, and what is the protocol to just block One of the doctors, if you want to come up. The, the, the uh, hospital systems in the county, uh, in coordination with the Center for Health Affairs, are developing a drive-through screening process that will probably be cited, I'm maybe it's getting out a little out of line here, at the county fairgrounds. These are for people who are concerned but not actually physically ill. If people are ill, they will seek care as they normally do, and um, the people who will be screened will be a test will be obtained and then they will be informed and their pri primary care physician uh, will be informed. That will require a physician's order for that testing. And I'll turn that over to my colleagues if anyone wants to add any more to that. So for your question about what to do if a patient is suspected to have COVID-19 and they refuse testing, we are gonna rely on public health departments to really react to, that they're gonna be taking the responsibility for isolation or quarantining. Um, it's our job to try to help identify the patients and, and eventually help with testing and take care of them when they're sick. But we were working very closely. All of the hospitals together are, are working closely to coordinate our efforts and working with the public health departments. And when did the start through testing? Well, So just uh, um, William Bryan from University Hospitals. Um, there has been no um, specific time when the drive-through testing one would stop. There's no specific location that's been identified to do that. We are all in planning stages right now. The key focus of what we're all doing is taking care of patients that need to be screened. Every patient in all the health systems are being screened um, appropriately up front. Um, and if they screen um, positive, that would warrant additional testing then we are doing that in our emergency departments right now. Those are the sites where we have our protective gear for our um, staff and for the patients, and we can provide the type of rooms that are necessary in order to uh, uh, achieve um, the testing in a very safe environment. To be clear, there's been no uh, stand-up or planned start for any drive-through testing. That's a very complex problem, and we're not there yet in terms of the numbers of patients, and we're looking at how to do that. Uh, going forward. But again, our focus right now is public health, public safety, assessing uh, patients that need to be screened in a safe environment, protecting other people in the public, as well as protecting our staffs that are having to um, evaluate, manage, and treat these patients. How many, you say, how many test kits are there in the county? You know, is there like a guesstimate? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know how many test kits are there. Uh, that I don't know because we're we're not doing it. Yes, ma'am. One of the doctors addressed why cancel these events. Why why does it matter to try to prevent the spread? Uh, like why don't we just run its course and then it's over? Can you explain that to people? So what we what we know is um, this is a um, highly contagious virus. That's one. Two, we know how it is spread. Um, three, we know that when people are in close proximity um, to people who have the virus and may be shedding, whether they're showing symptoms or not, it can spread very rapidly. We've seen that around the world, and we've had the opportunity to basically um, learn from what other countries have done well and what they haven't. Um, and I think that from that perspective, when you're looking at risk populations, we know who those risk populations are. They tend to be people over the age of 65, people who have chronic medical uh, diseases, 
um, and those are particularly susceptible to getting sick. And those are the ones that have the higher uh, morbidity rates uh, and potential mortality. So when you're in a close environment, when you can't keep uh, distances of six feet uh, or more, you put people at risk. And so the idea being uh, any uh, large events, any events where there's a large number of people are putting the public at risk and you don't know who may be shedding the virus at that time because they may be asymptomatic. So this could spread very quickly and I think what we're finding in the successful uh, plans that have been laid out here and around the country is that we're trying to minimize those gatherings to reduce the spread and reduce the risk to the uh, overall public health. How does it help to prolong that spread? Does it is it for the hospitals and the beds that they have? I mean, like, well, if people are going to get it, like, why not? I think a lot of people are saying, why not just get it over? Like, let's just all get it and we I agree that. Why don't we just have it? <laughs> so, yeah, so it's like sending your kids to the next door when they have chicken pox before we had the vaccine, right? Um, the, the idea is containment, all right? If you want to look at what happens when you don't contain this virus, look at Wuhan, look at Italy. And we are still in containment mode. We want to try to stay in containment mode so that, A, we have the facilities to take care of the patients that need our care, both with COVID-19 and without, and that we don't get people sick unnecessarily because the patients that are vulnerable can become very ill. They have a higher mortality rate. So this is not the cold where we're just going to want to let it spread throughout the city and, and Northeast Ohio or the country. And, so we still we really want to focus on containment at this point so that we can stay ahead of it. And that's why not having these kind of gatherings to unnecessarily spread it, potentially. Again, we don't have documented community spread yet. If somebody got that virus refused to be tested, is the law enforcement can't do anything about it? That I'm going to really defer to public there, health. Right? Refer to public health, the public health department. Um, is really the, the, the piece that monitors patients that are thought to have the coronavirus. But just to speak to your question a little bit more, what, what we're trying to do is- Can you come into it? <clears throat> sure. Yeah, if somebody got that virus and said, I don't want to be tested, leave me alone. So, so I'm going I'm to move back to your question for just a moment, if I can, because I think that is a public health and that, that, that is for the mayor's office to address your, your, your important question. But what we're really trying to do is flatten the epidemic curve so that we don't have an uncontainable and, and, and really uh, a spike of, of patients that we can't, don't have the resources to deal with. And I think you're exactly right. We don't know everything that happened in Wuhan, but we certainly have an unfolding picture in northern Italy. And, and that's, that's very much what, we, what we're looking to avoid here. And, and so what we know, we don't know everything about social distancing, but we do know that if social distancing is going to be effective, it needs to be employed early and not, not when we're truly in, in crisis mode in a community. And so that, 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 that's why these, these uh, seemingly perhaps draconian in some ways um, recommendations. And in answer to your question, we'll do whatever is legal and appropriate. Yes. That sort of leads into what my question was. Yes. Uh, with the parade, you have some abilities there because there's a parade where right. you can stop things. Uh, you've got some big events coming up. Right. You know, what goes on normally at Playoff Square plus the film festival coming up. Right. Those are in private venues. Is right. there something the city can do to order them? To well, the them? proclamation, um, what's the, I forgot what I called the thing. Well, that's, uh, the, still the, an right. That proclamation gives broad authority but we just don't exercise those broad authorities randomly. Uh, there has to be some basis to it. And that's why this committee is formed to, on a daily basis, get information and feeding up to the committee uh, what is going on on the ground. And then based on that, they recommend policy decisions coming up. Uh, but as the gentleman uh, mentioned about whether it's a movie theater or I know you mentioned those other things, but it could be a, a church gathering. It could be anything, right? And so, um, uh, so that's why we're saying that uh, people who are responsible for those gatherings should be considering, and people who attend them should be considering. Um, our authority, uh, even if we had it, we just couldn't execute it 
arbitrarily at a whim has to have some basis to it. So at this point, it's suggested they consider it, but if the scenario has changed, we will do uh, we will do whatever is necessary and appropriate and legal to uh, um, mitigate, minimize, prevent the spread of the virus. We will do that. We just can't do it out of the blind or arbitrarily. We, it has to have a scientific and a medical basis to it. And that's where this proclamation and forming of the committee and getting information input helps us to make the, the right decisions, not just political or arbitrary decisions. I guess what this is leading up to, the question everyone's going to say is, well, if it was a real emergency, can the mayor just order that you can't have this event? Well, uh, I guess right, right, and 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 I guess uh, in in some circumstances there are gives just like the governor has authority and the president, the administration does have some authority if based on some legal thing, and I and I believe the first step of positioning for that would be the declaration of this civil emergency. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I think some people are just wondering, like, well, are you going to cancel this next upcoming event? Is this going to happen? So I'm just wondering if you could, like, summarize that process so people know. Like, well, again, as I said, the, the, um, we're looking, well, first of all, we're looking at people to be responsible. Uh, the attendees or the sponsors, uh, we're going to do the same thing internally with the city and what we cause to happen, right? Uh, but this... Uh, committee that is formed under the under the proclamation will do those kind of assessments and and uh, and recommend policies uh, to me and to others uh, as to what we should do so that that's the process is 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 uh, is not again it's not arbitrary or whatever we feel should be going on we want it to be based in something the film festival, was that made in concert with the folks from the film festival, or was that? Well, they, they asked our advice, and, and we gave them our recommendation, and they, uh, we worked with them. What's your advice to people watching at home who might be a little panicked about this? Do you have just a mm -hmm. calming words of wisdom for people at home? Well, no. I, all I can do is try to tell the truth. And, and have the facts uh, as I know it. And, 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 and with that, uh, people can make the best decisions for themselves and their family. Uh, this is precautionary. There is no known case of the virus here in the city of Cleveland. I believe there were two or three recognized within the county. And I imagine there is a, that spreads out when whoever they came in contact with, there are people who are who are working, identifying who those people are, uh, counseling those people, interviewing those people. But those that's the medical side and, and the health side. Uh, for me, it's just a matter of disseminating to people uh, what I know to be the facts and the truth of the matter. And right now, there are no known cases in the city of Cleveland. And we're trying to uh, continue that. Just want to clarify based on this question. Mm. Confuses. What's that? Film festival still go. No, it's not. It's scrapped. It's gone. For this year. For this year. Yeah. <laughs> this year. It is. Will it be rescheduled for later this year, or just going to be? <clears throat> Probably play it by year. Okay. Yeah. Are you are you with the film festival man? Yes. Yeah. Would you would you come to the microphone? Are you telling the people who are supposed to be coming from overseas not to come in? Everybody, where they, no matter where they right. I, I'm Marcy Goodman, the executive director of the Cleveland International Film Festival. And yes, we will be canceling all of our guest filmmaker attendance at the festival. The vast majority was within the United States. Mm -hmm. There was somebody over here. I was going to ask for the doctors, the UH caregivers that are in isolation, do we know when their test results are supposed to come back or what the protocol will be when they return to work? So, so um, at present, they're in self-quarantine. Uh, the quarantine time period is 14 days. Uh, they are not symptomatic. 
uh, at, at present. Uh, they stay in self-quarantine in order to protect themselves, their families, and the public. Um, after 14 days, they get reassessed following the CDC guidelines and protocols around this. And if they are not symptomatic and they have uh, cleared the 14 days, they'll be evaluated and likely uh, released back to work uh, when we know it is safe for them and for um, our patients. Um, I would just add that one of the most important things people can do, going back to the question about what to do, is uh, be vigilant, uh, stay out of crowds. You've already heard the mayor talk about that. Um, but the, one of the best, single best things that people can do is stay away from friends and family members that are ill, stay away from family members that may be high risk, uh, and wash your hands with soap and water uh, for at least 20 seconds. That's better than Purell or some of the other hand sanitizers. Uh, if you don't have soap readily available, uh, the hand sanitizers are better than not using anything at all. Uh, avoid handshaking. Uh, we've all been here today uh, uh, elbow bumping and fist pumping people. Um, much safer way to uh, engage. Uh, and th those are the important things that the community can do for themselves and their family members. Uh, if I may, uh, have the people that you <coughs> been tested? And if so, if their test can come back in three or four days, assuming it went to a private lab, why do they have to wait 14 days to get back to work? Okay. Yeah. So um, the, again, in general, just because you have a test in a specified period of time, the 14 days is the incubation period. So you want to make sure that they are not getting sick during that period of time. Testing immediately after somebody is exposed may uh, give you some uh, false negative uh, around the test. So we are following the CDC guidelines, which is self-quarantine in place for 14 days, and we'll reassess at that point. Well, before you, um, back here. No. Uh, <clears throat> just for public information, there's a, a very good website, coronavirus.ohio.gov. It's the Ohio Department of Health, and they have up-to-date information daily. They update the number of cases, positive, negative, persons under investigation. And also, they've got specific recommendations for specific situations like home, school, churches, et cetera. So that's probably one of the best sources to go to. I'll say that again, coronavirus.ohio.gov. Thanks. All right, any other questions? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.